Are you currently working on a research project and find yourself struggling to formulate a strong hypothesis? Maybe you have a vague idea of how it should look, but you're not quite confident yet. Then stay tuned because this video is exactly what you need. In the next few minutes, I'll break down everything you need to know about hypotheses. You'll learn exactly what makes a great hypothesis, how it differs from a research question, and you'll get three concrete examples you can immediately use for your own project. Trust me, after this video, creating hypotheses will feel effortless. Ready to get started? Let's dive right in. And now, without further ado, welcome to Shry. When you're working on a research project, terms like hypothesis, thesis and research question can easily get mixed up. But each of these has a distinct role and knowing their differences is crucial for your project success. So let's first clarify the basics by answering the question. What exactly is a hypothesis? Well, a hypothesis, from the Greek word meaning assumption, is a proposition that can either be supported or refuted through scientific investigation. Now it's important to note that it doesn't represent a proven fact. Rather, it's a statement that's likely to be correct. In other words, it's your best assumption based on the available information you've gathered from scientific literature. Typically, a hypothesis establishes a relationship between two variables. For example, C positively influences B or an increase in C leads to a decrease in D. And so on. You get the idea. Now let's move on to a thesis. What's a thesis exactly? A regular thesis is simply a claim that requires scientific proof. Unlike hypotheses, there aren't any strict rules on exactly how a thesis should be formulated. In fact, in many cases, a thesis is deliberately phrased in a pointed or controversial way, just to stimulate discussion. Let's look at an example. Here's a thesis statement. Technological advancements in artificial intelligence will lead to a massive decline in jobs and negatively impact the labor market. Now, in this example, you can see that the thesis is much broader. It would be pretty hard to test if this thesis holds true in a single study. All right, another question you might have. Why do you need hypotheses when you already have a research question? Well, a research question is fundamentally different from a thesis. It serves as the guiding framework for a research project when it's written down in the form of a paper or dissertation. Essentially, it forms the backbone of your study's central argument. The research question defines a specific context. And within this context, there may be various dependencies and factors interconnected through hypotheses. Consequently, you can think of research questions as overarching guidance points, under which you can test multiple hypotheses. Oh, and by the way, a detailed guide on how to formulate a research question is also available on my channel. So, when exactly should you formulate hypotheses? Hypotheses are typically formulated when an academic research question is addressed using empirical research methods. In other words, if your study relies on quantitative data, you'll need to formulate a research hypothesis or possibly multiple hypotheses that clearly define the expected relationship between variables. Quantitative approaches are particularly suitable here because they provide systematic methods for testing hypotheses. If a statistically significant relationship between variable A and variable B is found, this result can support your hypothesis. Assuming, of course, that the hypothesis was initially framed to predict such a relationship. However, for literature-based research papers, case studies or most qualitative studies, hypotheses aren't very common. Why? because in these studies you're not trying to test theoretical relationships. You have different research objectives. In those cases, one or two well-defined research questions usually suffice. All right, now let's talk about the three essential characteristics of a hypothesis. First, a hypothesis must contain a logical relationship. First, since a hypothesis always reflects a relationship, it needs to follow a certain logic. The simplest logical structure is the if-then format. If you've ever done any programming, you're already familiar with this concept, the good old if-then. A hypothesis is nothing more than a logical construct expressed in natural language. 
For example, if variable A increases, then variable B decreases. Or simply, there is some kind of relationship between A and B, and that's all there is to it. Second, a hypothesis must be falsifiable. Your research must allow for the possibility that your hypothesis could be proven false. If you create a hypothesis that logically cannot be refuted, well, then the hypothesis serves no real purpose. You should also be mindful of your wording. In scientific writing, nothing is ever definitively proven. Even if all your findings support a given hypothesis, they only serve as evidence. Therefore, in your academic paper, you should state something like, the results indicate that the relationship may be valid, rather than outright claiming proof. Despite this, hypotheses in scientific research are either supported or rejected. Third, hypotheses should ideally be verifiable, right? Well, actually, this question isn't so easy to answer because it delves into the realm of scientific theory. Smart minds like Karl Popper have argued that a hypothesis only needs to be falsifiable but can never be definitively proven. The best way to illustrate this is through the classic example of black swans. Even if there were only one black swan in the world, the hypothesis all swans are white would already be false. No matter if 99.9999% of all swans were white. Rather than proving a fact, refuting it is often more feasible. So, the idea of proving hypotheses is generally considered an outdated perspective. Now let's get to the core question. How exactly do you formulate a precise hypothesis for your study? To formulate a research hypothesis, you need at least two variables. These variables typically come from existing literature. Imagine you want to design a customer service app. What relationships might be relevant? Here are three examples. H1. Enjoyment during use positively influences customer satisfaction. H2. An avatar with a photo of the service representative positively influences customer satisfaction. H3. Pop-ups negatively impact customer satisfaction. How many hypotheses should you formulate? This depends on the complexity and scope of your study. There is no fixed rule, but for a student project, three to five hypotheses are a rough guideline. You should never formulate a hypothesis that do not contribute to answering your research question. Carefully consider, which hypotheses do I need to answer my overarching research question? Only include truly relevant relationships in your hypotheses. They should directly support the core argument of your paper. Formulating secondary or unnecessary hypotheses only distracts from the clarity of your study. Where should hypotheses be placed? In an academic paper or thesis? The literature review is often used to lead up to the hypotheses. You can insert a section with the title Theory Development or Hypothesis Development immediately after your literature review section. After that follows the methodology section. In most cases you can derive hypotheses from existing literature. Each hypothesis should have a supporting paragraph based on scientific sources, explaining why investigating the given relationship is important. Make sure you do not repeat what you have written in the literature review, but only focus on what the literature or a specific theory assumes about the particular relationship that you want to test. The hypothesis then needs to be consistent with this argument. For example, first, you present an argument based on the existing literature or a specific theory. From this argument, you then derive your first hypothesis. Then, you continue with another argument, again drawing on the existing literature or theory, and from there you derive your second hypothesis. Finally, you present one more argument grounded in the literature leading directly to your third hypothesis. At every stage, it should be clear how you arrived at the hypothesis. If you follow this simple structure, nothing stands in the way of your success with a hypothesis-driven study. Except for one thing, a black swan. <laughs>